मेरा पिता तू है मेरा माता तू मेरा बंदप तू मेरा प्राता तू मेरा राखा सबनी थाई ताके हा काड़ा जियो तुमरी कृपा ते तुद पछाणा तू मेरी ओट तू है मेरा माणा तुझ बिन दूजा सब तेरा खेल अखाड़ा जियो सो हेलो हेलो ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स माय नेम इज शयान एंड आई वाज इन इन वायतत पेनेई टू बी अ गेस्ट स्पीकर टुडे एंड हैव अ शॉर्ट टॉक अबाउट द प्रैक्टिस आई थिंक विल बेनिफिट ऑल ऑफ यू नेई ऑफ्टन सेज that we should love ourselves first and then we have and we do and we have to do proper preparation throughout the day in order to have a better meditation so the topic i'm speaking about today is the inner smile the inner smile is an ancient taoist practice have you ever noticed the effect of a smile when we smile joy and well-being radiate from our eyes and connects us with each other regardless of spoken language when we extend love and kindness which can be as simple as smiling we not only help ourselves to feel better and laugh we we feel a sense of inner peace as well smiling is a universal language that extends compassion to others without the need or use of words when you smile to yourself you become your own best friend as ishwa often used to say master is friend first and master next so we have to be friend of ourselves first too before we can start to master ourselves connecting with this inner friend the inner you as well as the inner master helps you feel grounded settled and stable no matter what else is going on around you the inner smile meditation is a simple practice that you can do at any time no matter where you are If you find yourself sliding into a negative mindset or feel physical discomfort, imagine the smiling energy in front of you and draw this energy into your body. We all know the power of a smile. You automatically feel better when you're smiling. You automatically feel better when you see someone smiling to you. Everybody in this life wants to be happy. All life wants to be happy. but we have looking for happiness in the wrong places in this physical life physical perception our dependence on relationships dependence on other things and other people this practice is about discovering the inner happiness the inner joy the inner smile allows you to do that without depending on anyone else in the beginning you can think about you can think of yourself faking the smile as ich war often used to say this in his satsangs too try to smile for one week and see what happens or smile inside and keep any face outside and there is a saying fake it until you make it and this is very true and that's how we learn anything in our life from childhood anything we learn so the more you're willing to make this effort starting from faking it the more you're going to be in the capacity the skill and the experience So of course in general we all know how to smile and most of the times unfortunately we're looking for reason to smile in this case the invitation is is letting go of any reason let's say smiling without a condition smiling without a reason when we are always looking for a reason to smile or other times we're looking for a subject 
an object to smile to, even a story to make us smile. In this case, we're learning to smile inwardly. Inwardly to our own brain, inwardly to our own heart, inwardly to our own body and all our organs, as you have seen in the picture, I guess. And acknowledging all the cells, the energy inside of you, and the miracle of life inside of all of us. From that place, you can smile deeply. For the inner smile, you just close your eyes and smile to yourself inside and feel the wonderful effect of smiling. Smiling to your organs clears out all the sick and negative energy you may store or collect throughout the day. And a short summary of this, you can practice the inner smile from the moment you wake up and smile deeply into your heart and it activates the heart's very energy of love and compassion and as well happiness. And I invite all of you to just try it out and see if it works for you. And the pictures just shared are the organs you can imagine. They all have a smiling face on them. And don't forget to smile to your master too, because he's smiling to all of you right now. And he never stops smiling. He smiles to you unconditionally and loves you unconditionally. And now I will hand over to Ney and thank all of you for listening to me today. Thank you. Hi, greeting to everyone. So apologize to my voice today because I have a little bit of sore throat. But um, I told my master today that I don't want to cancel this session. So I have a great help from Brother Sayan from Austria today to talk on my behalf a little bit so I can save my voice for the actual um, meditation session. And thanks to you for your great help. I'm really appreciate. Okay, so I will tell you uh, a small story from Babaji. Because uh, today I'm in two mind. Oh, whether I be able to uh, conduct this session at all today because in the morning, my voice is gone. But then after that, it slowly come back. I, pr I pray to Master. Oh, um, Master, please, you know, allow me to be okay and conduct the session for your seva today. I heard one of uh, Babaji's story in Africa. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a nice story to share to all of you today. So uh, Babaji of Bias, right? He uh, gonna go to Satsang on that day. And from the world new to uh, his uh, place is slightly far away. So it takes some time for the driver or Sevada to drive Babaji there. And it happened that it rained so hard. Then, um, the tree, the big tree, fall down and block the road. So when they um, try to go around the tree, they cannot go around the tree. And they discuss in the car, oh, Babaji, what to do? We have to reverse the car. We have to change another to another road, which um, we're going to be two hours late for the sun sign. And Babaji was sitting there and he said, I never late for my satsang. I never late for uh, my seva for my master. This can't happen. And then Babaji said, that's okay. I will ask my master to fix this. And he asked everybody in the car to close their eyes. So everybody closed their eyes, including the driver. But there's one person in the passenger seat in the back, you know, uh, still open the eye. You know what happened? The car start to fly up, <laughs> close the, uh, close the uh, trees, and then fly across and then down to the uh, another side of the road. And the person that opened the eye, opened the mouth like, wow, what is just happening here? And then 
you know and then babaji said okay that's all right now we will be in time for the satsang today so i don't want to evoke miracle here but um you know this story just to show that how sincere they are master also sevada just like all of us and the seva they do for their master they take this so seriously it's do or die you know so i told myself right if babaji you know have that kind of sincerity to his master you know his is the best example for me to show up in the meditation today and thanks to all master i still have voice to talk to all of you today okay so we would uh, start our meditation session today by slowly uh, close our eyes okay we breathe in and out okay for around three to five times don't forget to do inner smile that you learn from Brother Sayan today. Okay, smile inside, smile to yourself. Breathe in, smile to your body, smile to your organs. Bring the power of inner smile within yourself. Okay, feel the power of inner spine spreading. Start the inner smile from your brain first. Okay, then go down to your throat. Down to your heart okay smile even more when you feel the power of love inside then smile to your lung You will feel love and warm inside your lung, inside your heart. Continue to send a smile to your spleen, to your liver. Send love and inner smile to that part of your body. Send the inner smile and master love to your intestine, your digestive systems. If you feel aches and pain anywhere in your body, send bigger smile, extra love from master to that point. Continue to see the inner smile spreading in every cell of your physical body. When you complete your inner smile, you will feel light, you will feel happy, you will feel energetic. This is the purpose of this inner smile. When you complete your inner smile, you will feel that your attention will slowly withdrawn from your physical body 
to your wisdom eye center chakra. The wisdom eye center locate slightly above your eyebrow level on your forehead. Slightly above, above your eyebrow level. When you go back inside your head, in the middle of your head, that should be the place of your wisdom eye center. Remember, wisdom eye center is not on your forehead, but inside your head. Slightly above the eyebrow level. When you start to feel that you are more in your head than your physical body, your attention is more withdrawn to your wisdom eye center. You can start to recite the holy names given by perfect living master that accept you as, as their beloved disciples. Express love to the five Lord that you recite these holy names. Call upon them as if you call upon your true friends because they are your friends. They're taking care of you 24 7. They've been assigned by our beloved master to take care of you whenever you call upon them. For non initiate, you can recite the word Sat Nam. Sat Nam means true name. For now, using the word Sat Nam. Because Sat Nam, also the Lord, the taking care of seekers, of true seekers. So if you are seeker of the truth, Satnam is res responsible to protect you and connect with you during meditation, during the time that you call upon his name. Okay? From this point, don't look down. Always inside, slightly gazing upward and inside your head. I will leave all of you here around five minutes to recite the holy names, try to find the wisdom eye center. Never look down, okay? If any image come, think of your master face, contemplate on your master. For the one who don't have any master yet, you can imagine inner sun. Imagine inner sun in the middle of your wisdom eye center and recite the word Sat Nam. Whatever you do, do it with love, express gratitude to the five holy lord that taking care of you express love to your master for non initiate express love to your inner son express love to the lord sat nam
sorry. Okay. So next. For the one who express love to the Lord, to your master properly, you will start to hear the sound on the background. You will start to see the light come and greet you. Remember when the light comes, it also has the element of sound in it. Because we made from light and sound, this is part of our true self. The meditation that teach by perfect living master is for you to withdraw attention inside to find and connect with your true self. Still continue to recite the five holy names or Sat Nam. If the light and the sound still stay, it means you make the right connection with your true self inside. And the light and sound when on, will only be more intense inside when you start to cover your eyes and ears in the sound meditation position. If you've been initiated by perfect living master, right now you can start to switch to the sound position. When you start to see some glimpses of light inside, hear some sound slightly further away from you. Please pick up the sound that is more echoing than another sound, the sound that have high pitch more than other sound. Because every sound, if you can catch them and keep, you know, and concentrate on that sound, it will bring you to the belt sound. And the belt sound will have capacity to pull you up across the inner region. Okay, so here I will leave initiate to start to cover your eyes and ears to listen to the inner sound. For non-initiate, you just enjoy, enjoy the company of love. Okay, continue to recite Sat Nam and put love, the feeling of love, the inner smile. When you recite Sat Nam and focus on your inner sun, because you will also feel that this inner sun have some sound in it. Whatever happened, just enjoy. Gonna leave all of you here for the next five minutes.
okay <clears throat> right now you will start to feel that you surround yourself by the shepherd by the sound current which is very subtle but full of love if you be able to see clearly inside you will start to see that all the masters are surround you in this meditation master from the past master from the presence and master from the future they make circle around you and give you love and blessing for master try to tune in with their love so their love become your love they are now beaming with inner smile smile at you so you have to smile back at them connect their smile to become your smile meditate in love and happiness no more struggle you are in the company of love you will start to feel some magical sensation within yourself you will start to feel light bliss happy and love it doesn't matter if you cannot see the seeing part is not important but the feeling part that you feel love is more important We have to meditate in love. Otherwise, we meditate for the mind, not the soul. Okay, I will leave all of you here for three minutes to exchange inner smile to your master. Feel their smile and smile back at them for three minutes. Don't use your mind. Don't analyze anything. Enjoy. Just be happy. If you are struggle to keep your inner smile to your master because you normally so miserable, offer this meditation of inner smile to your master. Let master take over. If you feel helpless in this meditation practice, offer this as a service, as the seva to your master. If you non-initiate, imagine God smile at you and you smile back to God. Put this meditation as service to God. Feel the inner smile. 
reaching deeper part of yourself within your core not only smile on the surface smile from inside deeper part of yourself as well Express love and gratitude to God, to Master, who make you come to this meditation session and learn about inner smile today. Make the in inner smile reaching deep inside you do your best and leave the rest to master leave the rest to god Right now, when you have the right smile inside, send this smile to your relative, to your family, to your friends, to your plant, to your pets, to the whole universe, to the whole world. Send big smile to everyone with love. Okay. Also feel that they smile back at you. And if they don't smile back at you, smile anyway. Give out love anyway. Enjoy the happiness in the company of smile, of the smile beings, smiling people. Enjoy master smile at you. And when you feel ready, start to come back to your physical body. Start to feel your hands, your legs. You can rub your hands together and then start to put on your face, your arms, your physical body with the inner smile, of course. And then slowly open your eyes with big smile. Okay, welcome back everyone so hopefully um, everybody enjoy this session today the meditation with love and inner smile so, and please apply this technique into your daily life you know when we smile sometimes i see uh, especially in the western world they have a fake smile on their face because they feel so miserable inside but they feel like they have to make a, you know put on a happy face outside this is wrong we have to smile from inside first and then we smile to the outside world you know where master smile master never make miserable face it's us we always wear miserable face you know so where master smile everywhere you go when you wake up, when you get dressed, practice the inner smile first because it is the best makeup that you can put on. Like me, being a girl, I always worry how I'm going to look 
you know, in the public eye. I always worry. Oh, oh do I have some dot on my face? So I have to cover my face. But you know, when you the best makeup is the inner smile. When you wear a smile, the whole world will be happy. Everybody will be happy because the smile is quite contagious. When you smile, when you are the only person that smile in that room, you will see after that people will start smiling back at you. So wear master smile, not your smile, master smile or God smile inside and smile from inside to the outside. So this is good practice and good technique from Bhatta Sayan because, you know, I really like what is his suggestion because anything can apply to love, right? So if any practice that we do make us feel more love, that's the right way to go. That's what we should do. And in whatever practice that we learn, even is for, um, you know, energize the physical body. Do it with master. Do it with love. That thing never come out wrong. Never. There's no such thing as a higher practice and lower practice. Because the perfect living master, they operate at every level at the same time. So they understand everything. And they said, you know, don't, you don't need to believe me. You have to have your own experience. So therefore, try everything and come back to report to me if it's good, if it's not good. You know, just like the practice of inner smile today, even if it's a Qigong practice, but you can apply to this Surat Chabad Yoga. Why not? Because every road leads to the same destination. Okay? As long as, you know, these practice make you feel more love. I don't see why not that we should apply this on top of our Surat Chapad Yoga. Okay. So, um, and today I have um, another special guest, Brother Takin. He gonna um, introduce you to a concept of Han So and Ban So because we happen to have interesting conversation during this week about how soul so how soul come into the creation and how soul going back to true home and apolo please uh, apologize my voice because you know i need a lot of helper today my voice is really bad and i have like a sore throat so I asked our brothers, two brother here, to help me with this session. So just enjoy. I hand over to you, brother Takin. And after this presentation, we can enter the Q and A session. All right. Thank you, Sister Ni. Um, let me just share my screen. So. Uh, just just to give you like uh just to give you a background of uh, what we are talking about um we are actually talking about um if if you guys have listened to ishwaji um you will know that um when the souls when the hans and buns in such kind um when the, when the hans choose to descend down to creation um they will pass through several realms and one of the realms is the uh, Akashi record and as Ishwaji mentioned um, this is the point where it picks a DVD so uh, this is the basis of, of that conversation uh, that I had recently with Sister Ne and um, um, whatever I'm, I'm sharing right now it's not my words this is from Master himself so I, I'm just uh, illustrating it on, on a diagram uh, for sharing to other seekers out there okay so so let's begin with uh like such can okay so um apologies for for the drawing this was done uh in a hurry so uh apologies for that okay so here is um okay for those that are new here who 
who don't know the meaning of Sashkan. Sashkan is actually the true home or the home of the souls. This is where the souls originate from. And this is where the souls or, or the ocean itself uh, transform and turns into uh, the, the awareness of the soul slowly becomes um, into a drop uh, and it becomes indiv individuated uh, with the awareness of the ocean. So what I'm showing here is, is what uh, the masters of the past have been uh, teaching us and um, this is the this is the concept that we know especially in in this uh, teachings of sanmat so uh, in such kind you have the han soul and you have the master soul the master soul being satpurush himself so as you get individuated in lower such kind um, satlok uh, you become a hans right and as the hans trans, uh, descends down into creation it it reaches the akashic record where it picks a dvd or a character to incarnate into so um, as what as we know when it descends down when we select a character you will inherit an infinite past life and an infinite uh, future future life so in this you will inherit a body a physical body and before this you might be you know any part of the eight million uh, forms of creation be it a tree an animal or even like um, a prehistoric man so this is this is um, what we understand today and do and in this time and space um, you will meet in your journey um, the guide or the the savior your um, your help package the rescue package in a form of another human being Called a PLM or Perfect Living Master, who will then take you upon his wings, initiate you, and then both of you will travel back to your true home, which is the ascending uh, part of things. So this is my understanding of 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 what I understood um, when a soul descends down into creation and during initiation begins the journey upwards to ascension. But during the conversation we had. Um, I think uh, there were some pointers that were um, further elaborated on and it brought me into uh, a more deeper understanding of uh, how it actually works. So I drew another diagram um, to share with you guys. Okay, so this is the diagram of a special soul or the Hans coming down in, into creation for just one life experiencing just one life so similar similar as the previous diagram the but there's a difference and let me elaborate during this descend down into creation as a hans you will select a character yes but the point of entry into this character is a little different than what we know so most of us think that the point of entry is during birth but this is actually not quite true the point of entry into a character happens at the point of initiation. The time where you meet your partner, your soulmate per se, a PLM himself or master himself, is the point of entry of the Han soul into the character. Why I say that? Or why master says that? The reason is, before this, before initiation, we belong in the karmic system. So in this karmic system, we adopt a karmic body that is bounded in time and space. And in this body, we, we do a lot of uh, birth and rebirth, right? Uh, the cycle of transmigration. And in this, uh, the, the, the main difference in this is our free will operates in the karmic system. So whatever we do, there's a cause and an effect. Okay. But as a Hans enters during initiation to experience what is it life what what is it like as a human um, character the the soul that was there that inhibits the body the uh, a band souls gets liberated and then the hans itself expands the upon the awareness of this sleeping buddha which is like the sleeping soul into a um a soul with with higher consciousness 
and if you guys realize during this uh during this initiation uh, moment the master will say this bond will never be broken what does he mean by this the bond with you and the master will never be broken simply because this is the point of entry where you and the master actually meet uh, each other and it's funny how the point of entry is actually also the point of exit but little did we know that we still have a body to carry on for our life so let's say for some of us we uh, we get initiated maybe at the age of 30 right and in, during this initiation time um, you will be transferred into the gray system yes you still operate in the karmic system because your body belongs to Carl, which is uh, in time and space but you technically belong in the grace system of master under his wings therefore this is what it's meant by your pralap karma your your, your sinchit karma are all being burnt up right and you only have your existing karma of this existing life to carry you on towards until death until physical death and then you will begin your uh, your journey upwards uh, your ascension journey or, or your journey back home and during this time um, when you meet the master as master Ishwaji used to say your journey technically ends there's nothing else to do so our, our mind doesn't want to believe this because when a Hans enters this body it also inherits the mind of this character which has been in the karmic system for probably 8 million lifetimes or, or a million lifetimes and it's being so used and conditioned into this mind that uh, the Hans will find it exciting to write okay so this is a it's a it's a new new body new adventure let me try to liberate this mind so this is what happens and uh, this is the game that all of us are playing so some of us will say what happens after that Let, let's say if i get initiated at the age of 30 so what happens if my life ends so most of us will be like um like clueless right um but actually uh, a special thing happens when you get this realization that uh, your journey ends then life has more meaning why because then you put your life in seva this is what all masters try to advocate satsangis to do or seekers to do um, because your journey technically ends there's nothing left to do you are then being entrusted uh, with this knowledge and uh, this seva to help other brothers and sisters who are still trapped in the system or haven't even realized or the uh, haven't even realized what's their their true uh, aim in life is so for those of us that that are aware and, and awaken uh, the next 40 years or 50 years of your life is spent 100 percent in the will of master as i as i put here um in in the gray system technically your your free will is god's will and you think that you have a free will but an illusion of free will but actually it all belongs to the master and ishwaji used to share with me that um, as soon as you're in the gray system um everything starts with the sat guru continues and ends with the sat guru so technically there's nothing left for you know um a character to do but the challenge is always the mind comes in and wants to grapple you and and put you um in the karmic system right but mm, as much as it tries it that will never happen because in the gray system um you're you're technically liberated by master so okay so i i, I will share with you another diagram um where because some of us will argue that hey you know why this this child from young he's so um saintly right uh, for example, Ishwaji, he, he, he was uh, in one month after he was uh, uh, born into this world as a physical character. Um, he got the grace of Great Master who met him uh, when he was still a baby. So what happens to in, in, this, in this scenario? So in this scenario, I have another diagram that I drew. This is if you have more than one life. So in that uh, previous character that I showed in the previous diagram, um, if this character 
still has not managed to liberate himself and still wants to remain in creation, right? Master will say, okay, I'll give you one more chance. You come in. This is this is one example. Um, and you'll be reborn back into another human being with, with better circumstances of life, maybe in a, even in a satsangi family. So in this life, you at birth are already in the grace system and, and you you realize if you if you do a flashback that your life has always been planned properly and um, seeking starts from a very very young age for for some of us right and in this next life character b you will then manage to fulfill a lot of your um affinities or relationship with uh, other characters that are marked to come onto the path and only then will then you you reach a, a, your true realization that okay i had enough uh, i want to go home and at this juncture of, of character b you will then also meet a perfect living master maybe the same master maybe a, another master and um, you get initiated and the journey back home um, progress so with with this with this um, illustration you will notice that Character A might be initiated by Master A and Character B by Master B. So this is what uh, Ishwaji mentioned with the list A and list B. Sometimes you're initiated with uh, with a previous master who might be on his list B. And um, the reason why some of us, when we meet uh, a perfect living master and a perfect living master looks at us, looks at, at us and says, um, "What? Once again, what you you are initiated? You you technically don't need initiation, but." For the formalities of this life, I'm just going to initiate you. So, um, cases like this is because you have already been through this process and you are already in the grace system, but you are just not aware of it. And um, this is what uh, this is what I I came to share uh, with short notice from uh, Sister Ne. And um, I I hope I hope you guys um, understand. And um, if you have any any questions with regards to this. Uh, you can uh, write to us and we can probably or you, you can ask me uh, or sister Ne, uh and she probably can explain this a lot better than me right now okay um, so um is anybody have any questions about meditation or uh, the diagram that uh, our brother talking to show us <laughs> so please uh take your chance now <laughs> And we will try to help you at best. Master Ne. Hi, Neil. Uh, hello. I uh, hope you feel better soon. Um, uh, I have a question that when we meditate and uh, um, the attention uh, starts going into the head and we uh, kind of see or able to make brief uh, contact with the um, the feeling uh, uh, of love uh, uh, at that time um, the heart becomes full sometimes and uh, tears come and that kind of pulls the attention back to the physical body um, so how can we what, what to do in that stage and how to continue yes a lot of people they um, they operate from emotional mind so when we uh, reach um, when we try to close our mind our emotional mind which is kind of the the lower part of the mind try to pull our self down so my suggestion will be continue to practice because when we close this emotional mind we will um, come in touch with intellectual mind and intellectual mind not um, it's not uh, emotion it's not connect with emotion and more connect with the soul so therefore even we uh, already operate in a great system we still have to use our mind to operate and the best way to operate in the great system after initiation should be try to develop our intellectual mind you know this is the mind that always in the state of wonders you know in the state of wonderment when this mind connect with the soul and the soul empowering this mind 
to look outside to operate you know to look at uh, our brother sister to look at uh, master to look at uh, the whole creation this mind will be in the state of awe in the state of wonderment and amazement all the time and we all have to meditate contemplate on master until we transform our mind fully mean the soul give power to our mind and the mind surrender to the soul so on that part then the mind will realize that oh i'm not in charge here i'm gonna just go with the flow and the concept of go with the flow is actually from our mind because the soul doesn't need to know any flow it's already go with the flow but we have to meditate we have to practice we have to do everything as master instruct to us at the time of initiation until the soul completely and empower our mind then you won't cry in meditation anymore you just enjoy you just you know enjoy the company you will feel so loved and warm and that love you know is very strange the unconditional love is always come with truth with wisdom it's not um you know it's not the love with separation anymore it's the love in oneness and it come in the same package with the truth with the wisdom so hopefully i answer your questions yes thank you master Nick. you're welcome and um anybody have questions or oh, sorry um you weren't here uh brother neil call me master nay he just asked me oh i really feel this inside can i call you master nay i always disagree with him i said oh you will just um give me troubles you know people just don't really like this so um but i said that's okay whatever you do if it's from love it never come out wrong right but we in this uh game of my game right some people might like it some people might not like it so i don't know for me the word master it means teacher in my language so um in our culture if anyone at all give your knowledge we can call that one master we can call that one teacher and on that basis that's why i said to brother Neil, that's okay to call whatever you like. You know, if you benefit from me at all, then, you know, if out of love, you call me that way, that's fine. <laughs> so any more questions? Yes, there is a question in the chat box from okay. Shruti Kurana. Uh, when there is no time and space, how can one stay in such kind? <laughs> okay, we not actually stay stay in such khan. We operate in such khan, you know. Like we sitting here, we are in such khan. But then, our mind cannot understand because our mind operate in time and space. Because our mind born from time and illusion, cow and Maya, so our mind fail to understand why we in such khan. Are you joking, right? Why in this such Khan, there's uh, so much uh, suffering going on? Why it's not all good? If such Khan is our true home, suppose it have to be all good. Yes, because in such Khan, there's a perfection. And within this perfection, contain everything. Imperfection is like yin and yang. It had to contain you know, light side and uh, dark side, good side and bad side as well. When we be able to operate at every level at the same time, then the awareness of such kind open up to us because we have this 
precious human body, which is a temple of living God. And where the God, where God live again, God reside in true home, right? So God reside in such Khan. So it must be this uh, temple of living God also live in the such Khan, right? Our true home. But we fail to recognize this. That's why before you reach the awareness of every level at the same time, make sure you sincerely practice. You do seva for master. You are put your life in seva. You put your life in meditation, contemplation on master, on higher concept of God. Then the awareness of every level at the same time will start coming to you. At first, you will see glimpses of this awareness of every level at the same time. How it feels like to have this dream? You know, the moment that you come in touch with unconditional love of the master, when you go to see master, at that moment, you actually live in such Khan. You actually see grim of such Khan to a living, to a living God, which is your master. So therefore, if you ask me, oh, where such Khan is, master carry this such Khan all the time, everywhere he goes. He operate in such Khan. He operate from our true home. And we also someday you have to transform to be just like him because master is like a philosopher's stone. When um, this philosopher's stone touch another stone, this philosopher's stone turn uh, another stone to be just like himself or herself. So he, yes, um, master is here to be a philosopher's stone to transform us to awaken to that master consciousness that actually we already have this inside all of us but because we put our attention outside all the time and not inside not withdraw inside so we fail to see that actually now here and now we live in such con beyond time and space so any more questions Um, Hi, I have a question. Hi. All right, I can wait. Uh, go ahead, Rohit. Hello. Yeah. Hi. I have a uh, I have a quick question. I think I put it in the chat window. Uh, it's uh, it's mainly, you know, how do we have inner smile? for all the levels of consciousness at the same time? Or, or what is inner smile in all level of consciousness? Thank you. Okay. So, okay, very short answer to you too, because you said, oh, it's short question. Short answer to you is that, that smile, that inner smile is not belong to you. It's belong to master. So in order to smile in every level at the same time, where master smile on your face where master smile inside you while you meditate there you go you have uh, the smile of every level at the same time and if you would just use your smile you know this is a, a human lousy smile it's not gonna work use a uh, master smile that you operate at every level at the same time chris out of everyone you should thank you you're welcome. So, any more questions? I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, please. Hello, this is May. Um, since uh, we are in grace time and, and Master is is taking care of every part of our life since initiation um like the good things we do the bad things we do is is his will uh 
how can we get more grace? <laughs> uh, how can we? Uh, because everything is in in his head, and of course we're following we're following his yes. his will. But how do we get more grace? Okay. grace. Yes, we all have the habit of uh, fall back into the old habit of the mind. You know, um, even we operate in the grace system because Master give us initiation. Master accept us as true friend, forever friend. Yes, we all have that deal. But our mind always want to shift back and believe in the old karmic system. That's why sometimes, you know, when you uh, when we follow our mind will, it's always go against God will and then suffering happening you know to pull us back again to the great system is always like this because inside our head there are two forces happening the Yao and Kao yeah grace and mercy and negative it's always like pulling us all the time you know to one side or the other side that's why during this time we need friends. We need enlightened friends. We need company of the saints. The one that they already overcome this mind game and operate fully in the grace system. So you need company of such one to help. Because um, being human is so difficult to recognize God because we feel God is far away from us. And here we have to struggle. We have to buy into this, you know, whatever our karmic self told us to do. So we need a good friend. We need a good example to actually shift our attention fully to the great system. So my suggestion will be surround yourself with good friends that actually operate in the great system more than comic system surround yourself by master teaching because that teaching is also from great system you uh, regularly listen to such sign you have master picture everywhere that you can look inside your house you know in your phone in your computer make yourself falling in love with god with master so when you fall in love you will be in the state of helplessness obedience right and gratitude so when you in the state of gratitude obedience and helplessness that's when you know that you operate fully in this great system and not before that thank you very much you're welcome. <laughs> Any more questions? Hi, Sister Nee. I have a question. Hi, Penta. Um, on uh, the um, things that uh, Brother Tarking has explained, I um, always think a lot about souls. And um, now he explained about Hans and that the, the Hans are entering um, the initiates and so what is um, left for the non-initiates <laughs> mm -hmm. yes because uh, the non-initiate they also seekers they are they also true seekers so i would say they semi-operate in both system so the moment they have intense longing seeking of the truth at that time they shift into the great system right but at the time that they uh, fall back and they follow their own my will leave the character life and don't understand what is beyond this physical life so at that time they operate in karmic system so um still you know it's um good quality to have to have see to to be seeking of the truth because that time allow them to have dreams of how soul 
operate in the great system. That's why in me, I always believe that in this whole planet, everybody is satsangi. They are non satsangi people. They aren't, you know, because everybody should be satsangi. Why? Because only in the timeline, you know, later on, these people who know nothing about master, who know nothing about the truth, they will come forward and become initiate just like us. So it's just the matter of time because everything has been placed in timeline as event. And in no time, you know, in true home, in no time, no space, this already happening. The journey of Han Sol go down into the creation is actually happening in no time in our true home. So therefore, this journey already begin and end in such kind. So nobody in this planet, including plant and animal, you know, they are all initiate. I feel like they're not outside the great system at all. They're in the great system, but they're not shipped into the great system yet because of the timeline, because of the event that each soul have to go through. So therefore, I would say that, you know, to the people who say to put the tag on, you know, oh, this is non-initiate, that initiate. I never agree. I feel we should be brother and sister on the same family. This is big spiritual family. And our father is God. Our father is the creator who created this whole creation. And he sent his children as soul to populate his creation. That's why we have wonderful story, wonderful creation happening because of this soul who volunteer to go down and make this play become life, become alive. That's why I told Brother Takin that no more, no more meditation session for initiate or non-initiate because we have to reunite these spiritual family together because we have to give chance to seeker of the truth to come in touch with higher teaching in whichever way we can offer. So that's why um, the style of meditation we change, we will focus more on love because all road lead to the same destination, which is our true home. And the only part is love. Thank you, that's beautiful. <laughs> You're welcome. Miss you, Sanja. Oh, miss you a lot. <laughs> so, any more questions? Yeah, I have one question. Okay. Uh, could you talk about, uh, you know, the Karma Yoga and, you know, how and, you know, just the perspective of action and with whatever we are doing and converting that with love? Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to talk about Karma Yoga because Karma already only exit in the karmic system because love actually operate in great system, but love can operate because it's overlap into the karmic system too. So on that, you know, whoever practice uh, karma yoga can actually practice love because they can have the experience of love. Why, um, why go through the karmic life as well. So that's uh, the only thing I can suggest, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Any more questions before we end this session? 
Your video camera is off. We would like to see your face for one last time before you leave. <laughs> oh, my camera is off? No, uh, I think it's on. Oh, okay. Okay, so we can fine. see. Okay. I can't see it. So, um, please, if anybody have more questions, you can actually email me at love at easterasia.com right so maybe um you some of you shy to ask in this session so please uh, email me and uh, i don't mind to take time to uh, answer back to all of your questions because this seva is very precious to me you know it's something that make me you know get up from my bed at all make me feel that it's worthwhile for me to live the human experience to remain human because i feel you know there's no purpose to life at all apart doing seva for master because anything else i don't feel much enjoyment in them at all you know i used to go to see movie and feel so good feel so happy to go to see movie but right now i feel you know, all the happiness has been withdrawn from me. <laughs> the only happiness that I have at all is to do seva for master. And every opportunity to do seva, most welcome. Please uh, contact me, okay? So I am all of your servants <laughs> on this. And uh, have a good day and a good week ahead all of you. So with master love, okay? So please continue practice this inner smile. It definitely make you feel good. You know, make you feel love. And please continue to love yourself. Because if you cannot love yourself, you cannot have God realization. Because God realization come with love realization. Yes. So thank you very much. And um have a good week ahead all of you with master blessing and master love bye bye <laughs>